Hey guys, welcome back for another screenplay update. Um, as you guys know, I'm going to start trying to do as many updates going along with how my screenplay goes. My screenplay, It's Me Daddy, I feel like everyone knows that by now. But the last one, the last update I made when I, was, I wrote the first sequence, sequence one, and um, some stuff has happened since then, and I am a little further than I thought I was going to be. And originally I wanted to do like an update every sequence, but I kind of failed because um, I'm now almost on pretty basic. I'm basically on sequence four right now, which is insanity, and I haven't updated for two and three. So this is going to be sequence two and three update, and then hopefully I'll get into more of a weekly or semi-weekly update. You guys should tell me: should I do every two weeks and do and like combined, or do every week? You guys tell me like what you think. So, I know the last time I did, um, I did one of these updates, I was on page, I think three maybe, I had just, I hadn't even introduced Lexi yet, I had just, it was basically just introducing Fallon, and I was talking about, yeah, it was just the beginning, well, now I'm about 35 pages in, and I have introduced all the major characters beside one, and... I cannot even begin to tell you guys how in love with this script I am. Um, writing a script is not what I thought it was going to be at all. It's so much better. It is so, I don't even know how to put it into words, it's so much less work than writing a book. It is easier, it's easier to get through, it is easier, it's just easy. Um, the hardest thing for me is the lack of description and putting in all those like fancy like you know getting really artistic but but that part can make it easy because it's just less it just goes quickly and um I mean I really I was on the fence whether or not I was going to enjoy writing screen and now that I'm doing it and I'm about well, three sequences into my first script I can say I absolutely love it and the process it's finally solid so I have two classes a week for no I have, I have five classes a week but um two of my classes a week are now dedicated to that script it used to be one we just went up to two so I have about almost six hours of classes just for that script alone and talking about it and workshopping it so let's just say I have two workshops a week it used to be one now we, we bumped up to two like I just said and I love that because we got because we're like replacing a class I didn't really like with another workshop which I obviously love and that makes my life and it's just it's honestly not at all what I thought it was going to be um I thought it was going to be you like write it and then you go in and edit and everything and it's very much like no go and just write right where you are and go back and we're gonna we're gonna have, like Next semester is going to be all about editing. This semester is all about writing. We're all about writing it. We're just we're writing. And then next semester is going to be going in and editing. So we just write what we want, make notes of what we want to change, but just leave it. And I really like that because it's not like going back. You just keep moving forward. Um, but now that we do have two classes a week and our class is on the smaller side, we're really lucky because we have very, very, very few people in it, meaning we get to have a lot of individual like um, attention and attention on our scripts and we really get to talk about it a lot as a group and really get like intimate with each other like with each other's scripts and really get give the scripts and the characters the attention they deserve which is very important to me and um for instance like t instead of and usually what they have to do when they have a lot of students is break into two groups and one group to have like and each person gets to like workshop once a week but because we have such few people we're getting to do it twice a week so to, for like tomorrow um my class i am to redo sequence three and then start into four and then go through that tomorrow in class which i'm so excited about um something i did learn nothing stays the same in the screenwriting i don't even know how to put that but if i if I, I wish I had like, maybe I, did I do one? I don't even know. A video of what It's Me Daddy was going to be when I first got the idea. Oh my god, see, I don't know, I'm just exhausted. When I first got the idea for the plot, for the screenplay, not when I first got the idea for the novel, 
back in like 2000, I don't even know, 11, 10 or 11, but when I first decided to do it as a, the, um, a screenplay, and what I have now, it would be polar opposites. Where I thought it was going to go is here, and where it ended up going is all the way over here. Um, the basic only thing that has not changed is the character's names and the killer. That's pretty much it. Everything else has changed in it, and I love the changes. And every single time I go into workshop, it gets just changed more, which is so exciting. And it sounds like really nerve-wracking, but it's really exciting. Um, I remember when I told my teacher that I wanted to do a adaptation from something I wrote once to um, to make a script, like turn my novel into a script. He was a little bit worried about it because he said people, like when that happens, some people are very attached to their novels, which I am, and they don't want it to change and they are not open to change. And I, from the beginning, was like, no, I know I'm going to be, I have to be. And I was, I really was. and. Just looking back, if I wasn't open to change, none of this would have been able to happen. And it's very good for my mindset to know that these changes I'm making, these are for the script. I can still write It's Me Daddy, rewrite it as a novel, and do whatever the heck I want with it. It's mine. But for this, this is the script. And that is going to be changed. And I need to be okay with that because it's not going to get anywhere if I'm just like closed mind and be like, no, this is how it goes. Because I'm learning that basically everything I had for the book would not work for a script. And I'm really excited for the opportunity to get to learn that. Um, so as of now, I have the entire plot narrowed out, but things still change every day. Um, and my biggest flaw, I want to say, my biggest problem is that I write um, sorry. I write very much description and I write a lot like a novelist. It's a habit. I, I can't break because I still use it, but I write like I write books. And the phrase we're kind of using in class now is like when they get to my work, it's like save it for your novel because I, I write like I write a novel, but I do write novels. So it's not like a bad thing, but it just, I need to keep it at home because a lot of things like I'll get like, I had like six, seven lines of description. It's like, no, three to five, narrow it down. No, you don't need that. I'm still get like the past tense. Shay always, Shaylin always gets to me. She's like, no, use the past tense again. I need to keep it like present tense, which is so weird because when I flip back and forth between writing fragile and writing it's me daddy, it's like Jenna turned to do this and then Fallon turns to, and it's like, whoa, it's all over the place. So I thinking the best thing for that is going to be keeping them on different days, keep my past tense in one day, my present tense in another day, because it just gets kind of crazy. Um, what else? Let's see. I finally named Fallon's partner, Detective Stokes, which I'm very excited about. But again, that could change any moment, because you guys know me with names. He doesn't have a first name yet, though, so I do need to pick a first name for him. Um, yeah, another thing, I was kind of like, no, it was, it's not info dumping, so I'm trying to think of the right word. I was giving stuff away a little bit too easily. Um, I kept putting all the information out there, like, I'm pretty sure I was like, oh yeah, Addison had a baby in, like, the first ten pages, and my teacher was like, what are you doing? You need to leave breadcrumbs. You don't want to give it away this quickly, and I definitely was giving stuff away quickly. He said, you need to put, make, put your character on a journey to get this information. She could not just receive the information. She needs to go get it, and that is what I was doing. So, right now, it's, I need to stop just being like, Here's the East, like here's an Easter egg. Here you go. I hear Fallon. Here's the information, and I need to make her go and discover it. Let's just say, like I'm enabling her as Fallon's mom. It's so weird, but as like her creator, I am kind of like I need to make her go out and find the answers, not to give them to her right away. And that's something that obviously all writers need to do. Um, depending on the character, and it's a little bit weird because Fallon was not in the original book, she was added in, and I'm still getting to know her when like Lexi and Fletcher and Addison and Jameson, I have known them since I was little, I kind of grew up with them, I know their characters, I know how they are, I know the personalities I wrote them to be, I'm still getting to know Fallon, I don't really know her that well. Um, I'm still learning and discovering her and adding things to her, but one thing I've heard from a few people is that she is just like Aria, exactly like Aria, which always makes me feel good because I think that all my girls have like a little stamp on them. You can tell I made them. 
Um, I'm trying to think what else. That's basically for sequence two and three. As the story-wise goes, sequence three is, um, I don't need two, it was kind of a while ago, I don't even really remember, but sequence three, as of now, is they, actually no, this is two and three. They ID'd Addison, they found her parents, and her parents said, like, oh, um, we, she, did you find her baby? And Fallon was like, well, what do you mean, baby? I didn't, like, what do you mean she had a baby? And they looked into it, and that they realized, she and Fallon discovered that baby Rosemary went missing at the same time, and that her body wasn't found. So, Fallon's body was found, but if baby Rosemary went missing the same day, where's her body? And she met, found, <laughs> she met Addison's mom, and Addison's mom was, like, insistent, she's still alive out there, she's still alive, you go to find her. And, um, Fallon went to her captain, and the captain's like, that girl, that baby is as good as dead. You are looking for a body, you are no longer looking for a baby. It has been seven years, there's no way she's still alive. Um, and Fallon has an internal struggle because she wants to believe that this baby is alive, but all her cop training is telling her that she's not, because, like, statistically wise, she, I mean, it's just the odds are not good for that, but she's trying to, like, she's looking at the family, she's like, but maybe if we haven't found her body, there's a chance. And they, um, got an age progression photo or a, like a facial reconstruction kind of like a progression photo of what baby rosemary would look like at age um seven and it was broadcast on the news and fletcher saw it and kind of freaked out oh, ignore my air conditioner and freaked out because it looked exactly it looks exactly like lexi and he's at, and he's trying to protect lexi and you're like you know what lexi i, I don't think you're gonna go to school today i think we're gonna stay home and Lexi's like why but i have show and tell i have stuff to do i'm the hall monitor i want to go to school and he is trying to protect her as her father from something that she doesn't know and um the word i just left off is fallon got the medical examiner which is so hard to say medical examiner and aria got a partial print of a fingerprint a part, obviously it doesn't fingerprint, a partial print off of Addison's body around like her chest area, somewhere where like you do CPR or something, and um, they ran it and it was a match in the system to a man named Fletcher Kendrick, and where I just left off, Fallon is going against her captain's orders to go track him down. So yeah, that's where I left off and I'm very excited. Actually, like the minute I wrap up this video, I'm going to go work on it because that is my life. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you want to see going forward. And as always, leave your comments down below. Leave questions. I'm always open for video suggestions. So yeah. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.